Hello, this is PG. Welcome back to the channel. And as you can see, we're playing Dragon's Dogma 2. So today, in the VP guide, we're going to cover Dragon's Dogma 2, the photo mode. I've um, got my little band of uh, helpers here who are just running off. Should really have done this in daylight. Anyway, we're not going to worry about that. So if you want to take pictures in the game, how do we do it? Okay, so to enter the photo mode, I say firstly, this is PC. I'm using an Xbox controller, but most of the controls will be across the board. So we're going to press, we're going to pause the game. We've got all these options. If we go down here, you can see there's a photo mode. So we're going to open it. Right, now we're in it. Okay, first thing you need to know about this photo mode is you cannot move the camera, which I don't really understand. So what does that mean? I mean, if you use the right joysticks, you can orbit, okay? So we can tilt and we can rotate around our main character where the, ca the, the, uh, the camera is always anchored. But we cannot change where this camera position is. We can just rotate and tilt. We can't crane either you know normally you can raise and lower the cameras but you cannot do that here um what else have we got if you want to reset categories you've got the x button if you want to reset everything you've got the y button um if you want to get rid of the hud you press the start button like that so that's when you want to take your picture um the back button what does that do it tells you if you want to take a picture on the pc you've got to use the screenshot fun function and the red button exits the photo mode but we won't exit we'll go back in so that's the basic settings that are on the bottom left right now we've got tabs here as you can see see all these tabs first tab is camera area of view essentially that zoom so look bang zoom in and zoom out so we'll zoom we'll zoom right in this is really just about changing the framing. Um, obviously, you've got problems in this game with framing because you can't move the camera. So this is just a way of zooming in and zooming out. Inclination essentially means tilting, rotating. Um, so you can do it upside down on both sides. You could do it centrally. That's really what these things do. Depth of field is the next one. So that essentially means blurring so let's say for example we're going to turn it on we're going to focus on otto who's my main character the slightly creepy looking old dude and then so you have the focus distance so we've set that to otto let's put the blur overall up and the focus area obviously the higher it is the more area in the photo is in focus the lower as you can see very little and when it's very low like that you've got to adjust the focus distance even more so but when it is very low you do have to kind of you probably can't even get anything in focus so you might have to adjust a little bit like that and the short range like, and long range blur will affect like what it says essentially the short and the long range effects of blur so depending on where your focus distance is so if we change short range blur you see what I mean? If you go top, it's blurry. You go to the bottom, it will short range will become focused. And that's obviously with everything in focus. So if we turn it off, that's um, obviously to take a photo. I'm used. You can press the print screen button. You can print the press the button on the PC that refers to your Steam uh, guides photo mode, like to screenshot. I'm using an Xbox controller, so I use the little share button. And it just does that bang it just takes a picture so it stores it in my video uh, capture area um, but there's lots of ways of doing it okay next tab effects one we've got brightness oh well obviously in the nighttime brightness is quite useful but it doesn't start to look quite weird and you go down very low it's incredibly moody brightness it's quite delicate i wouldn't use it too much because it's very severe so you know maybe just tiny little incremental uh, adjustments depending on the scene a vignette what is a vignette well a vignette if we put it on maximum 
what has that done? That's made it very dark, isn't it? A vignette really essentially is a border around the edges of the image, like almost sort of the outline of an eyeball. And the stronger it is, the darker it is, okay? Now you can use it, like if you want to isolate the figures in the environment when you want to darken everything, you can put the vignette high and then just raise brightness. You see what I mean? It's more it's more focused on the subjects, isn't it? Because like like let, if we turn the vin turn your vignette off, it's mad. Look. On it's like a sort of a shadowy filter around the edges but used with brightness it's quite helpful bloom bloom is like um i guess as a photographer it's like uh if you in the old days they used to put vaseline on a photo lens to give it this dreamy quality so vaseline type lens so you go bloom that's what would happen if you had like sort of like a smudging on the lens do you see what i'm saying but you've got to be careful because nighttime it's not so bad. It gives it a nice warm glow like that. You see the see the glow. If you use it in daylight, it can be problematic. But there you go, that's bloom. And then we're on to effects too. Filters. So filters, obviously they're all just named something different. Um CPO, we've got a nice black and white one. Um pastel, dark. So let's put it on the black and white and then we've got an intensity so like you might not want it all black and white you might just want it 50 percent saturated so you just put it on half still color in it but it's washed out put it on zero the filter no longer applies much really but yeah the higher the intensity the higher the filter impact lens distortion well put it on and we'll use it it's like yeah it's sort of I don't know how would you describe that 3d type effect sort of um, distortion a weird feeling like if you're disorientated um, not a fan of it really it's, it's very rare that I would ever use that chromatic aberration well if you turn that off and then you put the lens distortion up you see what I mean that so you can use the lens distortion without the chromatic aberration which is a bit nicer but it's a bit weird the lens distortion because I mean essentially it's making like the center circular circular or the outer bit circular which will make people look chunky or a bit weird looking like when you use a, a camera with a curvature on its lens too close to someone's face and they look like they've been distorted um, and if you use the chromatic aberration you know you can use that there but not a big fan of these these settings so I don't really use them but the filters are good Frames and logos, what have we got? Okay, so we've got square. These are just good ways of framing your picture. You could do like a widescreen one, like it's a movie, for example. That would be quite good. Uh, let's change the angle of this because it's getting boring. Um, logo type. So we've got Dragon's Dogma, and that's it. And then we can just choose where we want it. You know, do we want to make like a mock-up type poster? We can put the Capcom logo on it. Why would we do that? I don't know. Japanese photo modes, honestly. And then we've got the copyright information. Japanese, they love their copyright, don't they? Anyway, there's no need for the copyright on. There's no need for the thing. Get rid of them. The only one I would use is the Dragon's Dogma thing if I wanted to make something like a cover arty type thing. So that's the frames and the logos. And then the last one, display items so we've got screen filter on or off but I don't really know what that does maybe there's something that unlocks later HUD display you can have your HUD which I don't really recommend because it's ugly it just makes it look like a screenshot doesn't it and then you've got the grid you turn it on and off the grid I like to use because it's good for measuring eye line like you know you could measure the eye line to the character on the left to the top line so it's balanced but problem is uh, you know, you can't move the camera, can you? So, let's exit the photo mode and come out. That's the photo mode. It's pretty uh, limited stuff. There's not a great deal you can do with it. So, the biggest problem you've got is you can't move the camera once you're in it, right? So, what does that mean? Well, that means that you almost have to decide on your framing prior to taking the photo. So here, for example, I'm trying to centrally position myself between these two characters, wait for my character to look away, and then I'm gonna pause it, go into the photo mode, 
and it's sort of going to be framed okay. Obviously my character has just shut his eyes so that's not really helpful. Um, so again, you might have to come out, recompose it. Let's try a different angle. Let's try that one. Enter the photo mode. He's done it again, isn't he? He's done it. It's too late now. All right. He's, he's bored of what they're saying. So we're going to try and just frame one. So if you want to frame three characters, you've got to try and get the distance right. So where you're standing will affect it. So we could probably zoom it in a bit. And we do one like that. So like, you know, you wouldn't rotate it. You could put a blur on and then the focus distance would be where Otto is, the main character. And the focus area enough to cover the characters. Bump the blur up. Long range blur would blur up. Well, it doesn't seem to make much difference. Um, we'll try that vignette trick. So let's put the vignette on. So that's very dark, isn't it? Can't see a lot. So how can we remedy that? Brightness. You can see now we've got some idea of what's going on. And we'll, we'll, we'll accompany the brightness and the vignetting with the blooming just to give it a bit of a feel. And then we'll try filter. What should we try? That's weird, isn't it? Yellow. That's quite interesting. Filter intensity. Go back to the brightness, maybe drop it a bit. Okay, <laughs> what is he doing? Um, frame, do we want to frame? Let's put a widescreen frame on it and let's put Dragon's Dogma. Problem is you can't remove the frame, which is a bit frustrating. So can we change it? No. Okay. Again, I'm using the grid to get the eye line two thirds up on that character. There you go. That's done essentially. Turn off the grid. That's the photo. That's just an example of how to take a photo. We'll screenshot that. Um, come out of the photo mode. Obviously you've got a torch. If you turn the lantern off, it'll be very dark. So at night time you need the lantern. But at daytime you don't have the problem. So yeah, that's the photo mode. Um, my thoughts on it are, I don't think it's a very good photo mode because you've got no contrast. Oh, hello, what's going on? Um, no contrast. You can't move the camera and you can't crane the camera. Those are fundamentals of photography. If you can't change your composition in a photo mode, I don't really know what's the point, if you know what I mean? Like, what can you actually do? Um, so yeah, excuse me, sorry, Otto's had, had enough of this photo mode lark. Anyway, so yeah, I think it's not a bad photo mode, but it could be better. They need to add the options to, to give you some, um, you know, being able to move the camera would be a start, wouldn't it? What are we doing? We're gonna, so we're just doing this for the photo. Come here, come here, ladies. No? Oh God, what's going on? Oh no, let's do one more, shall we? Can we do action? This is a problem with action. Again, it's like you're centrally focused. So it's, um, yeah. I'd probably give it, I don't know, a six, a five or a six out of 10 for the photo mode. The game's gorgeous. The character creation is gorgeous. It's a beautiful game and the characters are just amazing, but you can't move the camera. So it's kind of annoying, isn't it? So let's try again. yeah all right well i'm giving up. i'm giving up with this photo mode now but yeah you can take pictures i've been taking pictures if you want to see them head to my twitter head to my community page or my youtube channel um but it is a struggle but you know as a photographer you've got to be creative so yeah that's the photo mode guide this is otto and his merry band saying goodbye See, do you know what I mean? Like, if I could just move that camera, it would be all right. But anyway, there you go. We'll leave it there. I'm going to go have a cup of tea. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Cheers.